In this video today, I'm going to give you at least seven reasons why you should try narrowband imaging. Right over my head here is probably the single biggest reason why you should try narrowband imaging, and that is because of light pollution. If you start using narrowband filters with your mono camera, or even your one-shot color camera for that matter, although that's a very, very inefficient way of doing it, well, guess what? Light pollution gets knocked back by almost a factor of 100 for the average you know, narrowband filter that's out there. Now, me personally, I just got some three and a half nanometer filters, and boy, these babies, they, they reduce light pollution by almost a factor of 150. Yeah, 150x less light pollution to deal with. And that makes processing narrowband data incredibly easy. So yeah, if you are sick and tired of that, okay, and you just hate light pollution, well, guess what? Switch to narrowband and start shooting narrowband images because they're basically light pollution proof. Reason number two why you should try narrowband imaging is because the processing is so much easier. I mean, you don't have to deal with any gradients, you don't have to deal with light pollution, no background extraction. Basically, you stack the data, you stretch it, and you maybe do some things with stars in the image, and you might do some color manipulation to get like different variations in the Hubble palette and you're done. You know, that, that's all there is to it. My one shot color data images that I stack, they often take me sometimes up to eight hours just to do one picture because there's so much work involved with that one shot color data. And it's because of all the light pollution. Now, I know like recently we were at Cherry Springs. It's a Bortle 2 sky. And I did lots of imaging, collected lots of fantastic data, and I actually still haven't gotten done processing any of it. Now, when we got back, like I think three nights after we got back from Cherry Springs, I also collected some narrowband data, which I stacked and had done in a, less than a week because it's just so much easier. So one of the other excuses that I hear as to why people don't even try narrowband imaging is they say, well, it takes too long to collect a narrowband data. I don't have multiple nights that are clear every single year in order to make an image. Well, that's actually not really true, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that you do not need longer exposures to do narrowband imaging. You just are able to take longer images when you are doing narrowband imaging. Mainly that's because you don't have any light pollution to deal with. But secondly, it's because of those pesky stars. Those pesky stars are kind of like if you were trying to, trying to photograph just the tree, not the leaves, just the tree in a forest. Well, all the leaves kind of get in the way. You can't really see the trunk of the trees very well because of all the stupid leaves. Well, narrowband imaging is like coming in, in the winter time when all the leaves are gone and taking images of just the trees. That's kind of how narrowband imaging works. Stars are broadband items. They're incredibly bright. They blow out your image. They, they just leak all over the place and flow over into other pixels and create all sorts of headaches when we process our images. But yeah, with narrowband images, you basically are blocking the majority of that light from the stars and we're capturing just the nebulosity. And that's just kind of one of the reasons why you can do longer exposures with narrowband imaging and allows you to capture faint details that are just impossible any other way. And I'll go back to my tree analogy. Why on earth are we so interested in the gas and the nebulosity that is in space? That's because when we observe the gases and the nebulosity that's in space, we are able to see the story of the universe and how it's expanding, how it's growing, how it's developing, how things are being born, and how things are dying off. And that is only possible by seeing the actual tree because that's what shows us how it has grown and how it has experienced the decades and the centuries, essentially. So if you were to take two different exposures, one of a one-shot color camera and another one with a mono camera through a narrowband filter, and they're both the same length, guess what? You're actually going to capture about the same amount of nebulosity between the two of them. You just minus the pesky stars in the narrowband image. Now, I'm gonna quote Neil deGrasse Tyson here, okay? And this brings up reason number three I think we're on. 95% of the universe is hydrogen, 95%. That means that 95% of your image is going to be contained in one tiny little sliver of the entire rainbow. 
So if you're not doing narrowband imaging, I mean, you're really kind of missing out on a lot of the universe. You know, so much of it gets blocked by the stars that are in front of all of the gases and they just kind of, you know, ruin the image essentially. But with narrowband images, you know, we can block out those stars and you can see so many things that are just impossible to see any other way. I remember when I first got into narrowband imaging, uh, I just had a hydrogen alpha filter at the time. That was all I had. I didn't even have a cooled camera. I was using a planetary camera that was a mono camera. And I started taking just random shots of different parts of the sky. Just pointing the scope into the, into the uh, Milky Way and just started taking pictures. And I was just blown away with the things that I could find. And yeah, I was actually finding nebulas that aren't even on any charts, that don't even have names. Yeah, narrowband imaging is fun. In the old days, when I just shot one shot color through one of my cameras, my SLRs, I did a lot of pack my gear up, take it to a dark sky spot and try to image. And often I had a limited frame of time. I had to drive there and back. I was tired. I always forgot things it seemed. Yeah, the list goes on and on all the different things that can go wrong. Well, nowadays I just shoot my backyard. And it's so much easier, okay? Because everything's already here. I don't ever forget. T taking this guy with me to a dark sky spot it's just about impossible. This thing's big, all right? It weighs a lot. It actually, it weighs almost as much as I do. Now, you say, well, what if I do live in a dark sky spot? I'm actually moving to a dark sky spot soon. We're going to be in a Bortle 4 sky soon, which I have been in a Bortle 7. Even there, I am still going to shoot narrowband. Why? Well, okay, let's take the Hubble telescope, for example. The Hubble telescope is in space. It has a Bortle 0 sky. It has no atmosphere around it whatsoever. And yet still, NASA uses narrowband filters and a mono camera on that telescope to take images of space. Why? Because there are things in space that you simply cannot capture any other way. If narrowband imaging is so good that even Hubble will use it over anything else, yeah, you should try it. Yet another reason why you should try narrowband imaging is because the scopes that you need for astrophotography with narrowband are not as expensive. You don't need a perfect apo in order to do astrophotography through a scope. And that is because you're shooting one very small sliver of the actual rainbow at a time. Now, this right here, this is actually a 120 millimeter acromat. And yes, normally this has tremendous chromatic aberrations, but I can still take images through this, especially with very narrow filters like my new three and a half nanometer filters. And this thing costs almost nothing. If I was to buy this as an Apo with a, and tie it with my one shot color camera, it would have cost a lot more money. And that, by the way, will offset often the cost of your filters. So don't go saying that oh, narrow band imaging is really expensive because of those filters. On the scope side, you can save yourself quite a bit of money. For those of you that are in the northern latitudes, I know who you are. Some of you put your scopes away almost three to four months out of the year because your nights become so short that you really don't have any time to image. Take this spot, for example. This is actually right now, and this is in the lower 48 United States, and these guys are only enjoying one hour and 20 minutes of darkness. But if you shoot narrowband, okay, see all these purple zones? It's almost four hours there you can shoot hydrogen during those times. And yes, even into some of the light blue areas, you can shoot sulfur. Sulfur is even further into the red, which is kind of unaffected by our atmosphere. So yeah, that's just another reason why you should want to try narrowband imaging is because it literally makes your nights longer. Yet another reason why you should do narrowband imaging is actually because of the moon. Now, a lot of my one-shot color only friends who do astrophotography and only do it through a one-shot color camera, three out of four weeks of the month, they don't do any imaging whatsoever. And it's because the moon's out. But if you shoot narrowband, you can shoot during a full moon. As a matter of fact, I've been outside at night when it was so bright, okay, it was so bright, I could read a newspaper. That's how bright it was. And yes, you can still shoot during those times. So that right there will dramatically increase the number of nights that you get 
that you can image, you know, and as the saying goes, it's always a clear night when the moon is full and you can't do anything else. But except for us narrowband guys, we can still image. So the last reason that I'm going to give you as to why you should try narrowband imaging is because mono cameras have a resolution level that is unattainable with a one-shot color camera. Take for example my setup here. I'm actually using a ASI 178mm Pro Cooled. This is a camera that actually isn't even in production anymore. It's only six megapixels. However, six megapixels in the mono camera world is actually plenty of resolution. Why is that? Well, with a one shot color camera, you have the bare matrix. And in the bare matrix, well, your, your pixels are actually divided up into groups, okay? If you have a 20 megapixel camera, for example, 10 of those pixels are green, five of those pixels are blue, and five of those pixels are red. And from that, all of your information is just basically up digitally which doesn't actually create information when you do that into a 20 megapixel file. You know, yes, the camera manufacturers, they kind of lie to us about megapixels. And by the way, in astrophotography, the green megapixels, you say, oh, I got 10 megapixels of green, right? Yeah, that only works in the daytime, okay? Astrophotography, there really isn't anything green in space. Yeah, even oxygen three is kind of in the blue. Yeah, that 20 megapixel sensor, it's only five megapixels when you're doing astrophotography. Whereas with a mono camera and narrowband filters, or if you're doing LRGB through your mono camera, guess what? You get to use every single picture. And this is why everyone who has ever switched from a one-shot killer camera into mono with narrowband images and filters and so forth has always remarked that my images are much crisper. And that's because they haven't been digitally up -res. They're actually looking at the pixel per pixel information exactly as it really is. In this video, I'm trying really hard to get you to maybe consider giving narrowband imaging a try. Now, are mono cameras going to be the thing forever? Actually, it's possible that they might someday be eclipsed by a type of one-shot color camera that can actually detect all the different parts of light. And that is technology that it may be 20, 30 years from now that that could actually be realized. But it's going to mean an immense increase in the amount of data that can be captured. Because right now, you know, with one-shot color cameras and even with mono cameras, we're throwing out all the other portions of light in order to focus on one particular aspect. You know, with the one-shot color camera, we do that through the bare matrix, which we kind of hate in astrophotography. And then in mono cameras, well, we have to shoot one filter at a time. But yeah, there are days coming when all of this will be able to be done through a one-shot color camera, but it's not yet, folks. So for now, yes, the mono camera is king. So I am going to quote Robin Wong, who is, in my opinion, the Mother Teresa of photography. Go out there and take more photographs, and that is what I would encourage you to do. Take more astro photos, do more processing, study your creed, which my creed is kind of narrowband imaging. That's why my channel is called The Narrowband Channel.